scientists are trying to figure out what happened to Arctic sea ice this fall. This is the time of year where the amount of ice is supposed to increase, and it should have started happening more than a month ago when the sun set on the North Pole. The pole stays in darkness until spring, and that's prime season for ice to form. But that's not happening this year. By the end of October, the area of Arctic sea ice was almost 1 million square miles below its average in past years. That's roughly the size of the eastern United States. And it got worse last month when parts of the Arctic had temperatures 36 degrees above normal. That was enough to slow growth and even make some ice melt. Sea ice in the Antarctic is also at a record low. NASA posted this photo in November showing a rift in one Antarctic ice shelf more than 70 miles long and 300 feet wide. This winter could see record lows for ice on both poles. Severe flash flooding in southern Spain has left one woman dead and forced authorities to issue a red alert, the country's highest public safety warning. Around 100 cubic meters of rain are estimated to have fallen within 28 hours. A friend of the 26-year-old victim said, she called me in the morning, the floods took her by surprise. She might have been asleep or something, and she didn't realize what was happening until it was too late. She told me everything was flooded. I told her to go out, and she said she wasn't able to. The flooding is reported to have brought widespread chaos to Malaga and other parts of the Costa del Sol, with numerous accounts of drivers abandoning their vehicles. The local government says more than 600 emergency incidents have been reported over the weekend. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Hmm. Ay, por Dios. A ver si te tira el tabique, socorro. Ten cuidado a ver si los coches rompen el tabique. Por Dios, por Dios, por Dios. Mira cómo entra el agua al portal, mira, 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 no ve la ola que ha hecho. Mira, 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 mira los coches, mira los coches. Madre mía. Thank you. 
Anh phải ra tiền đa trắng lưỡi Cô bảo mình Đây, 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 đây Khai dọc hàm mông, hàm mông Đeo có liên nữa Liên lớn kèm theo chiều cường những ngày qua đã làm ngập lụt khu vực khối phố 6, phường Phước Hòa nằm sát ven sông Bàn Thạch với khoảng 320 căn nhà bị ảnh hưởng và khối phố Đoan Trai, phường Tân Thạnh. Tại đây hầu hết bà con đều làm nghề sông nước nên đã chuẩn bị sẵn ghe xuồng để đi lại. Phía chính quyền địa phương cũng đã huy động mọi phương tiện lực lượng để sẵn sàng ứng cứu khi cần thiết. Do nước đang đổ về các vùng hạ lưu nên đêm qua và sáng nay tỉnh Bình Định có hai địa phương nữa bị ngập ở nhiều khu dân cư và giao thông bị chia cắt là thành phố Quy Nhơn và huyện Tuy Phước. Trong khi đó, giao thông lên huyện miền núi An Lão vẫn ách tắc suốt 3 ngày nay. Công việc hôm nay của tỉnh Bình Định là hỗ trợ, cứu trợ cho những vùng ngập sâu. Phương án hỗ trợ khẩn cấp cũng đã được địa phương đưa ra nếu nước vẫn rút chậm như hiện nay. Và lập biển cảnh báo không cho người dân đi qua, tùy vào tình hình mực nước để có phương án lưu thông hợp lý. Động di rời người và tài sản đến vùng cao giáo an toàn, đặc biệt hết sức cẩn trọng và sử dụng áo phao khi chuyên chở bằng ghe thuyền thúng nhỏ qua vùng ngập lụt. Theo dự báo, trong những ngày tới tiếp tục có mưa lớn do đó cùng với phương án phòng chống lụt bão của cấp chính The Inca Chaca Reservoir, which serves La Paz, has been reduced to less than 10% of its capacity. The mountains that surround it should, at this time of the year, be covered with snow. The rain, when it comes, is not enough to alleviate the worst drought anyone here can remember. Marta has had to close her restaurant. There's no water. We've been waiting, asking those who have water to give us some, and for the authorities to come because we really need it. Emergency measures are in place to get water to those in need, but it's sometimes not enough, and many are forced to find it where they can. It's chaos. Without water, we can't do anything. So we've come here to use this stream to wash our clothes. 
Rationing means many have running water for only a couple of hours a day, or none at all. We tend to take for granted something as fundamental to our daily lives as water until it runs dry. Many Bolivians are now discovering that every drop counts for washing and cleaning, for cooking and drinking, for recreation and industry, and even for flushing the toilet. The government blames a combination of climate change, waste, poor investment in infrastructure and unusually low rainfall. It's pledged funds to avoid future crises. While this minister says they've also identified where they went wrong. This was not foreseen. And those responsible have been sacked for their negligence. They have to take responsibility. Neighboring countries have promised aid. Schools have closed and hospitals reduced their services. Many say life here can never be the same again. That attitudes must change. It's very difficult. If you have to live through this, you learn to value water, this liquid vital to life that we cannot keep wasting. The water shortages have hit poor and wealthier neighborhoods. Farmers have lost crops and livestock. Residents are increasingly taking to the streets to demand speedier action, to demand water, the water necessary every day for everyday life. Daniel Schweiner, Al Jazeera, La Paz. The bulk of the time was with uh, President-elect Donald Trump. Uh, I, I found it an, an extremely interesting conversation uh, and uh, to be continued. And welcome back to Hannity. So the left and the liberal mainstream media, they're having a meltdown over what they call the rise of fake news around the country, but they have turned a very blind eye to real fake news, like global warming propaganda being pushed by the press and the left wing for years. Let's take a look. It is true that the earth is warming, even as we have climate deniers in the world today. Climate change is real, it's urgent, and America can take the lead in the world in addressing it, right? Now, it's one thing to argue over how to lessen global warming. It's quite another to deny it's even happening. There is overwhelming scientific evidence our climate is changing and that we are in part to blame. Climate change threatens to completely alter the way that we live, from the way we produce our food to where we live, how we live. But the debate is settled. Climate change is a fact. We face a genuine planetary emergency. We cannot just talk about it. We have to act on it. We have to solve it. Joining us with Reaction, nationally syndicated radio talk show host out of Cincinnati, Bill Cunningham, Fox News contributor Monica Crowley. Bill Cunningham, according to Al Gore, wasn't the Earth supposed, supposed to have been destroyed by now? Sean Hannity, if you go back 15 or 20 years, Florida's underwater right now. Uh, Alaska would be like a jungle, and we know that this isn't the case. What it fits is a simple principle. The Democrats want control of the economy, they want control of the jobs. Through the EPA, they impose a liberal orthodoxy, and if you or Monica or anyone disagrees with them, you'll be marginalized, you'll be slimed and called names. A great newspaper, the motto really is all the news that fits they print. They think abortion is a sacrament. They think the southern border is fine. They think our relationship with China is A-OK. -okay. Normal people understand global warming has been going on and cooling for eons without human involvement. Earthquakes, sunspots, uh, avalanches, tsunamis all affect weather. It's not hey, man-made global if warming. If it snows, it's global warming. Nature. If it doesn't snow, global warming. If there's an earthquake, quake, global warming. If there's not one, global warming. It doesn't matter. They blame everything. But in the 1970s, Monica Crowley, they were saying in Time magazine, the next ice age is coming. So we go from ice age 
to global warming, now to climate change. So no matter what the climate is, they've got an excuse. Well, of course, because what this is for the left, and this has been the case now since they started to make this argument uh, three decades ago plus, is a massive wealth, wealth redistribution scheme. It's also a critical part would, of secular how, progressivism where they, this... where they turn the environment into God. So it's a way of separating uh, Americans and it, Westerners from God and organized religion. And no, it's also a wealth redistribution scheme. Isn't it predicated on this belief that we're raping and pillaging the planet for profit, and if we cut down a tree to build a house, somehow somebody's going to make a profit. Yeah, but again, this is part of the secular progressive agenda and has been for a long time. It does turn the earth into God and replaces God. But more importantly, Sean, as I, as I tried to say, it's about taking wealth from wealthy individuals in the Western world and wealthy countries and transferring that wealth to the third world and, and elsewhere, according to how the global elites see fit. This is nothing to do with the climate. This is nothing to do with the environment. Right. There's no evidence of evolution from one species to another. There's microevolution within a species, but not going from one species to another. Oh, really? And actually, yeah. you're, you're, the way you frame this and mm. your very closed mindedness mm -hmm. uh, really is a very good example of the kind of uh, censorship we see within the scientific yes. community yes. that won't even allow discussion about the controversy that says uh, that we can't even discuss uh, any evidence that might show that evolution is questionable. Right. Where, where did you study science? Well, see, that's the point. Uh, scientists are now claiming that they're the only ones that can speak on this issue. And yet, when people who look at the evidence uh, go to the Smithsonian uh, Museum on Natural History, and when we look for where's the evidence to show evolution from one species to another, all we find are drawings, illustrations. There aren't the uh, actual material evidence showing it. So while there are attempts to say that only scientists can speak on this, what we have are scientists that are then creating a, um, an isolated uh, community and saying that we're the ones, almost like a, it's almost like a religion in which only scientists are allowed to speak and teach on it and to teach everyone else. And everyone else must believe okay. what the scientists, what particular scientists say. But the scientists who question evolution are being censored out, are being blackballed out of the scientific community but and not, and being told that the rest of the world cannot listen to them. Yeah. Um, I mean, the evidence is actually rather substantial. It's, it's not just fossils, you know. I mean, it's DNA. Presumably, you, you're not concerned about DNA. You accept the existence of DNA. Do you? I think DNA helps to prove that each person is an individual created yes. uh, and uh, as distinct from one another. If you look at the DNA of all animals and all plants, what you find is a beautifully arranged hierarchy. You find that our DNA is close to chimpanzees, slightly more distant from monkeys, slightly more distant still from rats, slightly more distant still from lizards. The whole thing falls into a beautiful hierarchical pattern, just like a family tree. It is a family tree. How would you explain that? And where is the evidence? Well, the evidence is in no, the no, DNA. Excuse me. Where is the evidence of um, evolution from one species to another species, the macro evolution? Well, it's in the DNA. It's in the DNA. It's in the geographical distribution of species. What you're talking species. about are commonalities. But again, where's the material evidence of, go, of uh, evolution from one species to another species? Well, we obviously have a different conception of what evidence is. Um, scientists accept that as evidence. It's overwhelming, massive evidence. But species to another species. If that, if evolution had occurred, then surely, whether it's going from birds to mammals or, or even beyond that, surely there'd be at least one evidence. There's a evidence. massive amount of evidence. I'm sorry, but you people keep repeating that like a kind of mantra because you, you just listen to each other. I mean, if only you would just open your eyes and look show at the Show it evidence. to me. Show me the, well, show me the bones. Show me the carcass. Show me the evidence of uh, the in-between stage from one species to another. Every time a fossil is found which is in between one species and another. You guys say, ah, now we've got two gaps where, there are, where previously there was only one. I mean, almost every fossil you find is intermediate <laughs> with something and something else. If that else. were the case, the Smithsonian National His Natural History Museum would be filled with these examples, well, but it, instead it they're is. not. It is. When we talk about intermediates between 
species. We, we, we're, of course, not talking about intermediates between modern species. We're not talking about intermediates between dogs and cats. We're talking about intermediates between ancestral dogs and slightly more recent ancestral dogs. Now, in the case of humans, uh, since Darwin's time, there's now enormous amount of evidence about intermediates in human fossils. And we've got various species of Australopithecus, for example. Uh, and these are, I mean, some Australopithecus are intermediate between others and ourselves. Then you've got Homo habilis, Homo erectus. These are intermediate between Australopithecus, which was an older species, and um, Homo sapiens, which is a younger species. I mean, why don't you see those as intermediates? Mm. Evolutionists bear the burden of providing the evidence for uh, those of us who are not scientists to see it. And if the evolutionists had the actual evidence, then it would be displayed in but museums, not just in illustrations. No, I mean, so what I go back to have you seen Homo erectus? Have you seen Homo habilis? Have you seen Australopithecus? I've I've, asked you that what, I've seen, what I've seen is that in the museums and in the textbooks that whenever they claim that to show the evolution from one species to another, it relies on illustrations and drawings, no, it not, the, um, not any can, material evidence. Uh, you might have to go to the Nairobi Museum to see the original fossils, but, but you can see casts of fossils, exact copies of these fossils in uh, any, any major museum. Well, let me, let me ask at. you, why um, are you so aggressive? Why is, it that it's, why, why is it so important to you that everyone believe like you believe? Well, I'm not talking about belief. I'm, I'm talking about facts. I'm talking about, um, I've, I've told you about certain fossils. And every time I ask you about them, you evade the question and you turn to something else. You well, I can say, even if, again, I say that you can name a few of those. But they still don't show. They still don't prove evolution from the slime to the uh, intricate human body. Well, there should be, if, if we had gone from that, that broad of an evolution, there should be overwhelming tons of material evidence, not just an isolated, uh, no, th isolated uh, thing here I mean, there. I, but again, uh, there is not evidence. I happen to pick human hominid fossils because I thought you'd be most interested in them. But you can find similar fossils for in, from any vertebrate group you care to name. Of course, there are but lots of... But I guess I go back to why is it so important to you that everyone believe in evolution? Why do, why do you see... You seem to almost feel like it's dangerous for people to believe that human beings were created uh, individually and with a distinctness and created by a creator. Well, why I is that? I don't like the word belief. I prefer to just uh, ask people to look at the evidence. And I'm asking you to look at the evidence. Well, and, and I'm asking you, why, is, why does it seem so dangerous to you? Why is it so important to you that people not believe in a creator? No, no, that's not the point. I mean, the, the, the point is that as a scientist, I'm concerned that children in American schools and in schools elsewhere should be exposed to the evidence and allowed to make up their minds about the evidence. And we completely agree. In fact, that's why the, the, the challenge in America, whenever this debate comes up, uh, is teach the controversy, teach the evidence. Because as it is now, in many cases, school children are only being taught about evolution. They're not being taught about the frauds in evolution and the, the uh, lack of evidence in evolution. So it's actually us who are arguing for teaching all the evidence, not just the ones that are favorable to evolutionists. Well, you could say which controversy. I mean, there are, of course, other creation stories than Genesis. Do you, do you believe that the world is young, for example? Do you believe the world is less than 10,000 years old? Well, um, I, uh, I believe that God created the world. And the time frame, it can be unknown. As we look mm. in the Bible, it's hard to know uh, what a, a day, the length of time that might mean in, in that context. So uh, what I go back to, though, is the human, human being, because that's like the, what I think we really care about.